For Krima Media's Quality, this is Sane Lamini. Joining me today is Minister of Water and Sanitation, Sendom Tuno, to give an update on the issues relating to his department. So many believe uh, uh, the country is faced with uh, issues of water and it's actually now a crisis. Uh, but you've recently announced uh, that your department is working towards ensuring water security at the recent uh, conference that you attended in Sentin. How are you planning to address the issue? We don't have a crisis of water in South Africa. Uh, I even have taken the trouble of going to the English dictionary, Oxford dictionary, to check what is the meaning of the word crisis. They say it is intense difficulty. It's not just difficult. They say it is intense difficult. In my imagination, such a difficulty will occur if, for instance, if you're in Gauteng and there's no water in the bar, that will be a period of intense difficulty. Or we remain with water for just a month or three months. That will be intense difficult. If there's a broken pipe somewhere, if there's a, anything like uh, we have had, load shedding uh, for an extended period such that you can't pump water from the vial uh, to keep your reservoirs uh, at the required level. You can't call it a crisis. You, you, you can call it a difficulty because people can't access water because the reservoirs are, are low, but it's not a crisis. I've been persuading mm -hmm. uh, radio stations, media, don't, don't, don't be alarmist. Uh, unnecessarily. But let me go to your question. What are we doing? You remember in, on the 18th and, and, uh, and 19th of February, we, we talked about all these matters and we said, even though we are a water scarce country, one, we don't have a crisis, but nevertheless, we have difficulties, especially on water services management. Water is divided into two. One is water resource management. That is your dams, your rivers, all of that, and your bulk lines. Mm. And then the second part or aspect is water services management. It starts with bulk when you deliver water to communities and so on. But in the main, it, it has to do with articulation. Then I said, what South Africa did some time ago in their legislation, they said the Department of Water and Sanitation and with water boards will deal with water resource management and bulk lines. And then they said municipalities, on the other hand, will deal with articulation, which is water services management, taking water to communities and to households and to business premises and all of that, and mines and uh, farming. Now, that is water services. Now, and then because of this differentiation, we have not been doing well on water services management, simply because municipalities are not doing well. Everybody knows it, not only on water, but on other services as well, there's decline. Now, when we came last year, we changed that, we repositioned the department. One, based on the constitution, that water is the right. It doesn't say bulk water is the right, it says water is the right, meaning water must get into you as a human being. You must have access and so on. It doesn't say bulk. So it was an error for the department to just stop at bulk. Okay. Two, the legislative section 57, it's, uh, 54 itself, it does enjoin the minister not to stand by when people in a community don't have water so that the minister must say, no, 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 talk to the mayor, talk to the mayor. I can't say so. I've got to go to those communities because I have overall responsibility of water in South Africa in terms of legislation and in terms of mandate. And I've got to live up to that mandate. And therefore, considering that, I then added to the department that we are going to have to do a shift. We are going to reposition you so that uh, we deal with the whole value chain. I've never seen people on the road demonstrating that they want bulk water. Uh, that they wanted them. Uh, people will tell you we want water, meaning to drink, to wash, for domestic use. And therefore, let us answer that and not leave that just to uh, the municipalities that are declining anyway. 
Now you are then saying, what, what, what am I doing? I've, uh, firstly, I've removed crisis from, from you. There's no crisis uh, and from South Africa. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that people have what? I then said, I've repositioned the department to answer to this of expressed concern or grievance of people having no water to drink and so on. I've done that. Three, I've filled up all the posts, all the meaningful posts in the department so that the department can function properly uh, in, in even on deliver. Three, I've, 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 I have uh, <coughs> reconfigured, and, and I'm still doing that, I haven't finished, uh, water ports to work very closely with municipalities to close, the, to minimize their problem of capacity, uh, whether it is planning, but actual uh, uh, delivery of water to them. That is working very well, and we're continuing with that. Number five, we form partnerships. We spoke about partnerships that, because we don't have enough money uh, to catch up with uh, uh, the deficit that we have of people having waited for water in some cases from 994. We just have 18 billion. Yesterday, I was in uh, uh, Limpopo. I was in Skukun. What were we doing there? We were launching formally a partnership with Libalelo, which is uh, a water user association, which has got a number of mines and farming communities or associations as members. What, are, what have they done? We persuaded them over here now to come together to play a role in delivering water, not only to them, but also to communities. And uh, over here, <clears throat> we've then now finalized this, this deal. We we're launching it formally yesterday. It is a, tw- a 24 billion rand a project, which is going to take some like five to six years. What is it going to do? It is going to take water from the warp dam, uh, which is a big, quite a big dam uh, in that area, which can meet the demand of people in Skukuni. How many villages? 38 villages. Who else will get water? All the mines that are in that area and farming organizations in that area. Who else? Pulukwane municipality, some more than 200 kilometers away. And uh, we will then meet uh, their demands. We know. We then went on to launch the first project of that partnership close to that. And what does it mean? It means a pump that is going to uh, send water to one of uh, the directions that we want water to be sent to. Mm-hmm. And the communities will benefit. But that's not, that's, that's the, that is the one wing of the, of the partnership. Uh, there's the second wing in the West which will pump water from Flag Boshielo Dam right to Mkhalakwena and in the northern side of Mkhalakwena. How many villages? 96 villages will benefit from this. So these are, are some of the interventions that we have done uh, 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 since last year when I, when, when I joined and, and they are bearing fruit. We know uh, from the recent reports that uh, Umshatu, the water board, uh, is faced with issues of... Uh, key position a uh, people being arrested are you worried that this will delay now the service delivery and what are the chances of overhauling the board the most important thing that you need to know about umsatuza is that we have gazetted um or gazetted um we've done a gazette or we're going to be we're in the process of doing it what does the gazette say the gazette says Umtlatuze water board is going to be a part of Umgeni water board. Okay. All right. So we're matching the two. And uh, legally, in terms of the framework, we have gazetted that we are extending the boundaries, in other words, the operational areas of Umgeni water to include the whole of the boundary of, of Mtlatuza. So if you like, between you and me, mm. very soon we, we, we are talking about disestablishing uh, Umtlatuza water. So that's the main thing that you need to know. The second thing is uh, exactly your question. Is it not going to compromise delivery? I want to say, as far as Umtlatuza is concerned, it is a weak board, a small and weak board. And because of that, 
adding to that, uh, all these corruption issues. We started some time ago, and they've since uh, been revealed that what has been allegations and suspicions is now um, getting verified, mm. and people have been suspended and so on. And uh, Luzo is not the only one. The, and uh, the CFO there is not the only one. There are others uh, who are there and investigations are continuing. We don't know where they are going to end. Now, already that will weaken the, 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 the board further. But fortunately for us, it is coinciding, one, with their term of office ending in December, this December. Okay. Two, it is also coinciding with the process of beginning to merge them. And that of uh, Umgen Water is also expiring uh, somewhere in March. So this is a good coincidence. And we don't even have a CE there. So we don't have to worry about, we'll worry about the remaining officials when we match them with. Uh, so instead of uh, lamenting that uh, this is going to compromise uh, service delivery, uh, it will be a temporal thing very soon. In any case, in, um, in Umkanyagu, the district, we have a action sec intervened via section 63, which is another form of intervention that we, that we do in order to facilitate delivery. We appointed to the water board to, to be our implementing agent. They have not been able to successfully execute that. We are finding other models uh, to do that. I've just been receiving a report now from my DTG, water and sanitation, uh, in order to make this a success. So we are delivering, we are mitigating their weaknesses, but there are major sustainable interventions that we are making where we'll have one port in the whole of KZN uh, to deliver water in the whole of KZN mm. without any confine, confinements, yes. Mm. Minister, water leaks alone yes. are, are taking around 30% of, of water in Nelson Mandela Bay. What is your department doing uh, to rectify the issue? When we intervened in Nelson Mandela Bay, they were six days into day zero. Mm. In other words, they were left with six days. And then we intervened. We, when we intervened, we identified a number of problems of managing water. Mm. This is apart from reality, the, the real matter that they were now suffering from, lack of availability of water, which was now at a level of crisis because Kabeha is supplied via two systems of, 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 of supply. To what they, are, they, are, they are about 100 kilometers away to the west. The first one is um, the Churchill um, Pofu Dam, and the other one is uh, Koha, uh, Koha Dam in the mountains. Mm -hmm. There is Koha Dam, which goes down and down and then up to Kabecha. The other one is both of them on the other side. Mm. Now, if you look at the four dams that uh, are the last ones before water goes to waterworks and then to reservoirs in, in, that, in that city, those dams were and are still running very low. Whether you're talking about Bofu, you're talking about Churchill, you're talking about Koha Dam, they were looking like skeletons if you reach them. And you have to really reach out very close to see how low water is uh, in, 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 in them. It was a very, very horror story. Mm. Now, so we're approaching a crisis there because water was now scarcely, hardly available. Fortunately for us, in uh, what? In end of March, we added 70 megaliters into the system of so while we were short of water in the dams and the system as a whole, there was then this other system that was pumping water, uh, adding 70 kilo, uh, uh, megaliters. Where is this water coming from? It's coming up Kharib Dam, which is some 200 and something, more than 250, up in the free state from the biggest dam in, in South Africa, into the waterworks, phase three of the waterworks there called Noet Khedah. And we facilitated that it be commissioned, and it was commissioned. But a number of boreholes uh, have been uh, drilled there and have been commissioned. And that includes one of the uh, uh, bigger boreholes in, in Kuha Kop. Mm. And uh, there, there are five boreholes which uh, are pumping water into 
water works there that cleans all the water from the five poles of manganese and iron. And uh, then pump water, clean water now back into uh, the grid of uh, Nelson Mandela Bay. Now, we, we have fixed all those problems, but then, let me come to water leaks that you're talking about. In time, we found out that they leak 6,000 times, more than 6,000 times in their system. This is a, a city that is running short of water in the manner that I've explained, but they still leak whatever little water that remains there. Mm -hmm. And we said, uh, look, there's no two way about it. And we're not going to pay you. Go and close these leaks. We wanted, we demanded a program. We demanded uh, they put money there and management to close those leaks. And uh, the last time we checked, they were approaching 6,000. They had closed 3,000, they were moving up. Mm -hmm. And as they did so, some of them were. So we said, there's no two way about it. Go and close all these leaks. Mm -hmm. But we went further to do what? To say, you now have to manage your meter. We realized that uh, this capacity that is not there or very little of it exists in, in municipalities. It's not just uh, there is this problem. Uh, most of the municipalities, last week, I received a report where we were assessing water and sanitation management in a Tewin, which is a city. Mm -hmm. They are leaking up to about 52% of the water that they get from Umge in water. Wow. It is more than half. Mm. And this is the water that they are, that, that they are paying in full. Mm. And uh, as soon as they have paid and it gets pumped into their system, they lose 52% of that. And mind you, they pay for the full amount, uh, for the full volume of water that gets into their system. And we are saying the system is not, a, is not sustainable. Mm. And so apart from Kabecha, there are other cities. And from Etiwin, we're going to go to uh, Kimberley. And what are we doing? We are giving them a report. I've written to Nkosazan. I've written to them as a city to say, I want us to meet. And I want to give you my assessment of how you are poorly managing water. Mm. Uh, and then we will talk from there. What is the objective? The objective is to engage them so that um, we close this particular problem. It means that their infrastructure, in short, is ravished. Yeah. Uh, they did report, as just like other municipalities, that their infrastructure mm. is old. But they like using the word aging, even though it is already aged. Mm. But it is further aging. And we now are in a position where we want to say we are no longer in the mood of standing away in Pretoria and complain about infrastructure. We want to engage them directly mm. uh, to say your infrastructure is either not there or is aged or it's just leaking all the water. It's the same in Mangaung. Mm. And then we work with them uh, to refurbish, uh, to renew and all of those. Talking about now Etewini municipality, we know it was badly affected by the flood in April, uh, resulting in more damage uh, to their infrastructure. What are you doing to fast track uh, those repairs? I know there are issues, especially in um, Eskawini as well as Tongat. All right, number one, we are busy with uh, Aqueduct One, mm -hmm. uh, which supplies water to bulk water mm -hmm. uh, to Reservoir Hills in Etewini. Uh, we will finish that sometime next year. And we are going to start with uh, uh, aqueduct number two. Uh, and uh, I need to find out from in water how far they have, they have gone. But I know work has started on the first one. Uh, so that we, we, we return uh, their supply, bulk supply to normality. There are other measures that we've done to uh, try and uh, uh, limit the damage. I mean, to uh, the supply uh, of water to take wind to mitigate but uh, they themselves we worked with them to uh, do a bypass in the southern aqueduct which is uh, the main bulk for them it is their their their, their bulk line mm -hmm. that supplies water to the southern parts of a and that is covered by that bypass while they are repairing um across the river there but what are we doing in in otongat in otongat <clears throat> the first thing that we the, the, we intervened on was uh, by uh, agreeing, working with them uh, on a tie-in, there's something called the tie-in, where uh, we were going to uh, mitigate the problem 
of lack of supply of water as a result of the damage done to the waterworks of Otongat. That tie in we did, and we concluded it on the 15th of uh, September. And we said by the 26th of uh, October, we will start pumping from uh, the uh, repaired and refurbished um, waterworks. And I checked on the morning of 26th, and I was told that um, by the head of water uh, of uh, Etewin, that they were on site. They tested uh, the system uh, uh, the previous day, and it is working. They are now <clears throat> uh, pumping to all areas, including Hambanati, uh, but they are still testing the, the new lines to find out whether there, is no, there isn't any leak. And after three or four days, they will then allow the whole uh, area to get to normality. As far as the scouring is concerned, there's no damage that was done there by the storms. Mm -hmm. The only thing that is the water in Mklatu's municipality has never been managed properly uh, all the time. They've been doing temporal things. We're now putting together, well, I know the municipality has put together what they call the um, a, a package where you put together a, a packaged uh, waterworks mm -hmm. uh, and then you pump, you use it to pump in the areas. It's a very expensive thing. It's a very expensive exercise. Even water that comes out there is quite expensive. So it's not sustainable. And we were working with them uh, to come up with a, a new sustainable way. There are pipes as well. I'm a resident there. Uh, you don't have two weeks there without disruption of water. And then you get told water will be disrupted, but you don't get about um, a replacement of pipes. Mm -hmm. We will have to go there to say, please, it is time for you to replace your pipes. Uh, and so on. So that, that's what we're doing uh, at the moment. Minister, the University of uh, Free State Environmental Management Professor Anthony Tetson has said that nothing was learned uh, from Cape Town's experience of day zero. He said a uh, curtailing water use uh, is not the ideal situation. What is your response to the assessment? I'm not sure when he says we didn't learn any, any lessons because where I'm sitting, uh, the, the, there is a report that was compiled by the department, especially by those who were involved in fighting against day zero. When we, we were facing this uh, threat in Kabeha, we used uh, uh, experiences and we even recruited people from uh, Cape Town uh, to be part of our team, intervention team. So I'm not sure what he's referring to. He could be referring to something uh, else, but uh, um, I want to assure you and him mm. that we, not only did we take a lesson, we took lessons from what mm. happened, but in the main, what are we doing? He could be complaining about uh, um, the overuse of water uh, by South Africans. In South Africa in general and South Africans, they are using uh, more water than that is expected of them. Um, uh, uh, worldwide, uh, we use less than the average uh, per capita average water that uh, is used by South Africans, and that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> part of the element that you, that saw us going through uh, the difficulties in how them mm -hmm. there was an element of uh, overusing water because <clears throat> there there was load shedding, but it coincided with. Uh, uh, heat uh, lasting a couple of days mm. and people started saying my flowers, my lawn, my kikuyu and then they started taking drinking water and they started uh, <clears throat> using it up over and up. and then others washing I have evidence one of uh, <clears throat> people uh, well known to me said uh, I went to North, uh, uh, Pretoria North where I normally wash my car and this fellow has five Jojo, ta Jojo tanks that he normally uses uh, using rainwater. He catches, he harvests rainwater, fill up the Jojo, and then wash cars. But this time he said uh, he has run short of water from the Jojo tanks and he's using the normal water. So it is true. And it all affected uh, water, uh, water supply in Gauteng. So I'm saying, he could be talking about complaining about the fact that South Africans are resisting mm -hmm. uh, uh, this information and request that we, we send to them to say, don't 
overuse word. Please be, 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 be cautious. Please conserve water. And we are saying to you, please, uh, uh, I'm delighted that I have this interview with you. And uh, I'm pleading with you to have some space to urge South Africans, to caution them, wherever they are, that we are a water scarce country. Uh, we, we fall below average. But unfortunately, we use more than average water that is used by other people elsewhere. So it's a, it's a contradiction. It's a problem. We need to begin to learn and adapt and adjust our use of water to the circumstances that are facing us. And Minister, what would you say now to those who are not happy uh, with uh, the way uh, service delivery is being um, done within our country? I know you, you've also visited places where people have told you their frustrations. And there was a report that I read where you had to help a family firsthand uh, to be uh, assisted by one of uh, the departments. I think it was in Kabeha. People are frustrated, but now we are heading towards uh, 2024 elections. How are, you, how are you going to make sure that people uh, still trust your organization? We are uh, running a number of projects mm. that uh, through which we are making sure that uh, South Africans are, are water secured. In other words, addressing water security. That is the water resource side. What is the first thing? We are, we are getting to phase two of the Lesotho Highlands Water Project. Mm-hmm. We've just been on hold for some time. We have resuscitated it. Mm-hmm. The inauguration of the new prime minister uh, in Lesotho is going to help us because he's going to appoint a cabinet and I'll get a colleague at that side. And that <coughs> communication immediately after that will help us to speed up mm-hmm. the conclusion that uh, from where we, we left off with uh, uh, the former colleague on phase two, we, we, we have written to the Namibians, we held a meeting with them in Stockholm. They need to, uh, we want them to uh, write a letter of no, of no objection uh, 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 when we start phase two, which we must complete in 2027. And <clears throat> uh, uh, we will build a dam in Lesotho and a canal and uh, Upper Kharib will build another dam, and down in the border of uh, Namibia and South Africa will build another dam. And now this is delivered, and, uh, and we are agreeing to it, and we've agreed to it, not only to South Africa, but also to our neighbors. There's the first thing. Two, in each of the provinces with key projects, I'm from, <clears throat> I'm from Skukuni in Limpopo. There, there are two major projects that we are running. And these are projects that had huge problems and were have resolved all those problems. It's, it's Nandoni Nsami, otherwise known as Kian. We are now doing the connecting pipes. Otherwise the pipe from Nandoni Dam up to Nsami Dam in Kian, <clears throat> it has been laid, but it has got some gaps here and there where for instance, we want to connect for, uh, uh, for what? For reticulation in the villages. We're busy with that now, connecting the pipe, but it is now late. The last time I went there three weeks ago, we were left with something like four meters before we get to the canal at, <clears throat> on which we'll pour water from Nandoni and then into, into Tam, in Tami uh, Dam right there. And then from there, we'll reticulate, starting with 24 <clears throat> villages out of the 55. Mm. We can admit one thing. We could have done better in terms of management, managing this scheme. It would by now be uh, uh, delivering water to, to everybody there, but um, uh, it didn't happen. It is happening now. Uh, what do you do? You travel a long journey on foot. You get tired. But when is celebration? Celebration is when you reach your destination. And, uh, it, it, and, and everybody who, who is with you that side will say, hey, we are happy that we have arrived. They will not say they are happy that you have, uh, travel, you have traveled a long journey uh, with uh, 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 hills, over the hills. Uh, they will say, we know you have done that. But what, what are we celebrating? We're celebrating your arrival. 
So what we're looking at now in terms of that is the arrival of water, mm-hmm. not the mountains and the difficulties that we've gone through. That is where our focus is. That is the second, the second major scheme there <clears throat> is the one that I was doing yesterday to supply 38 villages in Skukun and 96 in Mkhalakwen, which is part of Skukun. So you look at the number. We could have done that long ago. That is our difficulty. We're doing it now. Was, we launched this, this, uh, this scheme. It will supply those villages, 38 plus 96. What else? In Mutze, I went there some, some time ago to unlock this, this scheme from Loskop Dam via the eastern side of Mutze up to uh, Tebegiliani, uh, a municipality, and Morocco, Dr. Morocco, uh, um, a municipality. These, both of these are now in Pumala. But what would be the benefit, M- Mutsa, which is part of Skukun, will then, in, 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 in its way, from Loskop, the pipe will, will then also allow them to get what in Mutsa, which, has been, which is the community that has been, been comp- complaining with water for a long time. And where are we? Two weeks ago, I checked procurement and so on because uh, our implementing agent is Kangala municipality. And they are very much advanced in the appointment of uh, contractors. And, uh, and I'm sure by now they've appointed some of the contractors and they will start doing uh, <coughs> delivering water there. This is as far as Limpopo is concerned, but it gets to Pumalang. But in Pumalang also, we're up in Likwa. Uh, in February next year, we will uh, uh, begin to uh, deliver via the contractors that are being appointed now to remove sea water, uh, to supply water there to, and to improve the overall supply. Because that municipality was is the one that is uh, uh, our major, major concern because of the spillage and all those things. But otherwise, these are the two schemes. I know they wanted them. Where down in uh, Nelspreet, that is a uh, uh, <coughs> that uh, uh, big municipality there, um, uh, and 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 we are looking at uh, uh, the dam at some point. <coughs> I live in Pumalanga. Let me go. Let me come here in Gauteng. Gauteng will 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 have its water supplemented a great deal via uh, phase two, and then other places around will will then get their supply. But then go to KZN. KZN, we've concluded an offtake with five district municipalities there, Teguinim, Kungulobu, Herikwala, Uku, and uh, Ilembe. And uh, beginning of the last le- end of the year, we must conclude that offtake. And then we'll start building uh, um, Umkomaze Dam, up Umkomaze Dam. But at the same time, we're, conclu- we're, we're now concluding. Um, uh, uh, the resuscitation of uh, uh, the project in Uku, which is Loam Komazi, it is stalled, but I'm told that uh, they are doing the final touches and that scheme will deliver. Um, this is case that then, <clears throat> but I'm going there on the 4th uh, to meet uh, three districts. Uh, this is Utugela, uh, Umzinyati, uh, and Amachuba to assess their water at close range. Because we want to intervene there and, and assist, they have a number of hot spots, and their management of water is not uh, meeting the demand, and we will intervene. And I can go uh, uh, um, province by province, including Umzimvubu, which uh, I've gone there uh, and uh, and we're completing the road. But shortly after that, we are concluding next week with Minister Ino uh, mm. yeah, because we have appointed the preferred, the preferred bidder. But it, it, we, 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 we need to deal with that and conclude how we finally will deliver water, um, <clears throat> uh, we deliver that project, uh, mm-hmm. um, with them very soon. But we are intervening. Uh, in, in, in Alfred Zoo, we are dealing with uh, the main pipeline from Lutek at them, which has never delivered water to the greater part of the communities there. There will be a pipeline from Lutek at them in Alfred Zoo which will run on the road up to a wild coast and supplying water to the villages there. It has never been done. It will be done now. Uh, that is our intervention. 
in the free state, we are in uh, very much in Machaven, 1.5 kilometers of uh, pipe, pipeline of uh, wastewater. It's going to be fixed. Uh, what else? 52 of the 56 um, uh, uh, waste w- p- pump stations will be fixed via our intervention. And then 11 of the 13 uh, water works will be fixed via our intervention. We then are busy with the, uh, the water port in terms of uh, um, uh, Welbedach uh, scheme, which links uh, uh, Welbedach water works with Mangaung so that we augment their water uh, because they have also taken over Kopanong as a, as a municipality that was unable to. So we're intervening there. Um, uh, and we have long intervened in Maluta Pufu. That's why they are no longer closing um, N3. It's because of our intervention. Mm. There is, and then we're in, in Northwest. In Northwest, we're about to cook. We, we have intervened um, in Tinokana, uh, uh, which is part of Zeras, uh, because of shortages of water. We've already intervened via tankers, but there are schemes that were put in together because they run um, that municipality via some 400 water boreholes. And we are saying, no, we need to put piped water and extend, even if it means extending it from Resenberg uh, to cover Zeras. But we're very much there to work together with uh, Ngaga Mudir Mulema uh, uh, municipality, but we want to strengthen them to deliver water there. But there's a, a strategic um, uh, uh, water scheme there that uh, we are going to be putting together before the end of the year and commit funds there. When municipalities call us, mm-hmm. we do intervene uh, and, and, and assist them. It, it, and, and I had a meeting two weeks ago with the, with the mayor of uh, Dr. RSM, uh, municipality and we're assisting we're, we're going to we have facilitated uh, two stalled projects and they will come they will be delivering water by the end of November this year this is a, these are our interventions so we're intervening in all provinces mm. uh, as it were that was water and sanitation minister Sendom Tono in conversation with Polity giving an update on the issues relating to his department